I'll be there for you. As I say hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Macy's Parade in Pop Culture. Today we are going to be looking at the ninth episode in general of one of the most popular NBC sitcoms of all time of the 90s through mid-2000s, Friends. Um, with specifically the episode The One Where Underdog Gets Away that first aired on November 17th, 1994. The same day as another NBC sitcom had another Thanksgiving episode that will be discussed in the next episode of this series. As many of you know, Friends has been considered one of the greatest sitcoms for many generations, especially for Gen Z's, I would say. Um, it, of course, started on September 22nd of that year, ending through May 6th of 2004, and all the main six stars have been loved by many of those people who have grown up watching the entire show. I know, I believe my parents had watched it a couple of times, even in recent years of having um, watching the show in a couple of reruns on TBS. So let's just get this out of the way here real straightforward for this kind of review. I would like to mention that I uh, have never watched an episode of Friends. I've seen snippets when my parents were watching it, most notably my mom, but I never had dabble watching the entire like show itself. Now, I know that you would think, oh, you should just watch the first eight episodes in order to understand it, cause it goes in, because this is obviously the first season, and the, we're only looking at the ninth episode of the show in general. But this is just coming from the perspective of somebody who is just as a newcomer to the show and just kind of going completely blind and not knowing much about the characters other than the impact the show has made for many um, people throughout that time when the show has aired. So this episode is basically of all of our main six characters are having a bit of a slight problem throughout their times. Uh, Rachel is going to um, um, somewhere to visit uh, another state to see her family, although she tries to get enough money at the very beginning. Uh, according, Apparently she's a terrible waitress at the coffee place that they uh, run at. I'm not familiar much of the show, so uh, specifically in um, Valley, uh, Colorado specifically, is where she is planning to go. Um, our siblings, Ings, uh, Monica and uh, Ross, uh, their parents are in Puerto Rico for over the Thanksgiving break, and Monica decided why not have do the Thanksgiving celebration. Uh, Phoebe, her grandmother is in the, um, a Lunar New Year calendar year, so she celebrates Thanksgiving in December. For Joey, he was supposed to be with his family, but after a poster that he made a model after, a lot of family assumed that he would be supporting or has STDs. And so they kind of said, nope, you're not coming. So he had to be stuck with uh, Monica. Same thing with Phoebe. And um, for Ross specifically as well, he also is technically the um, biological father of his ex-wife's um, child because she is uh, his ex-wife is actually a lesbian. And she is dating, of course, um, somebody else. Obviously, this was, of course, the 90s. And obviously... Um, there were some major LGBTQ plus events throughout the 90s in television that either were, like, there were some notable moments in television's history that did kind of either got some praises or sparked controversies, most notably the um, Ellen episode that got a lot of backlash from many people that were against it at the time. I know that's all talking about Ellen DeGeneres in this, but you got to keep in mind, this is the 1990s we're talking about. Um, although I wouldn't know if this actually does set place in the 90s. I think it does, and I'll explain that in a bit. And the biggest one, of course, Chandler. Um, he hates Thanksgiving for a passion because uh, that was the day when his parents announced that they were divorcing. And instead of having a big meal, all he just wants is some grilled cheese. So, yeah, massive conflicts that occurred, and um, things get complicated real quick for everybody. When the ever-famous underdog balloon from the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade has flown out. We'll get more into that. And then things get more hectic when pretty much all of them were locked out of Monica and Rachel's apartment. So things just don't go well. So, yeah, I... Oh, boy. So, as I've stated, this is coming from somebody that is... 
not familiar with the show, but I just want to get this, just based on this episode, I just might not like Rachel in general. <laughs> but this is just based on this episode alone, because, as you know, if you had seen that episode, Monica says, you got the keys, when um, they had to go out to see uh, the underdog balloon, and like, she thinks Monica has the keys, but she didn't listen, because she was all obsessed of going to Colorado, and obviously the food was cooking, and... Rachel is, I'm sorry to say this, even though Jennifer Anderson gets a lot of respect, just based on this episode alone, Rachel is an idiot. And basically almost all the characters are kind of idiots in general. Uh, not really, with the exception of Chandler, and I'll get to Chandler a little bit. Not because of the recent events, but because he's the best character in that episode. Monica, um, it is interesting she is doing all the cooking, and obviously she is, of course, I do agree, I would be mad at Rachel for not listening to what she, he says. She told Rachel she if she had the keys, and of course she didn't listen properly. Oh boy, what a roommate she has. Um, And then you got her brother's story, and oh boy. um, I don't know if it's a positive or a negative thing, because you got to keep in mind, this is only the uh, ninth episode of the show in general, and I think I'm missing something in that first episode episode in general so I might be missing something but I think they have been like they started a couple at the very beginning of the series Joey he doesn't really do much in this episode other than he was trying to ask a fellow Macy's employee that because he actually did work at Macy's one time for a potential date but then she saw the poster and oh boy I like that's the only other Macy's aspect that was mentioned in the episode other than the big scenario which is of course underdog um, and I want to talk about Underdog's appearance here. Now, based on the footage that we saw, obviously it's kind of like pre-recorded. Um, obviously the movie, the show, I think is supposed to set in the 90s because you have the 90s clothes. But then again, I almost feels like, is this filming in the, like, I mean, not filming, set place in the 70s? Because the footage they used a bit for the Smokey Bear and Underdog moments was the 1973 Macy's Parade. Obviously not from the NBC footage, of course, but obviously they're in the footage at Central Park West. Now, and obviously Underdog had been retired since after 1984. He has been in the parade, I think, since 1965 all the way up to that, and he had a long history in the parade. Um, but obviously many people have been still wondering, is there going to be a potential accident where in real life all the balloons float away? Now, for those obviously know, um, at the very beginning, early years in the Macy's Parade, um, from 1928 through 1933, um, when Tony Sark, who was the first head designer of the parade, wanted to bring those balloons he invented back in 1927 to actually be filled with helium to life the following year. And in the very first year, and they continued to do it, was releasing all the balloons at the end of the parade round. And then people around America hold the uh, Macy's hold a contest for those who can find any of the parade balloons to get a gift certificate. And this has been going on for many years, but this was also good for the Great Depression, but this was also the early stage of the beginning of aviation, but it became more and more dangerous, especially after an, inc ac kinda an incident occurred in, the 19, um, in 1933 when a student pilot ran, um, kind of went through a cat balloon and she lost control of the plane, and the instructor took control and managed to get back um, control of the plane safely. And that accident kind of did mark the end of the parade balloons being released from the air, because with more and more uh, planes coming through New York City, it became a little bit more dangerous to do that. And so you've been wondering, is there ever going to be a potentiality we're going to see another balloon released from the um, air again after being let go? There have probably been many, maybe many close calls based on, like, heavy wind parades. Not much, I would say, in the 1997 parade. Um, it's just, like, you're never going to see that. You've seen probably some accidents um, for some of the balloons or some, like, accidental tears, like the Monkey D. Luffy balloon um, last year with his hat. So you're never going to see that a lot anymore. Like, they're definitely not going to do it for the 100th Macy's Parade because it, it's, it's too dangerous to release them up when 
you don't know what um, plane is going to be going up, is up in the skies right now through Manhattan. And with the underdog bit, that's where um, Shandor's moment comes in. Obviously, he's the one that decided to kind of not join a bit of the festivities a bit and go outside and see the parade and see underdog and obviously you can also blame Chandler for being the one to tell everybody that the balloon has gone th been released accidentally and everyone to see it but I would blame more on Rachel for her not listening properly to her roommate that the keys as I keep stating in this episode but Chandler I do think was my favorite character of the entire episode um, I really did under, it, that's kind of a sad story of him not liking Thanksgiving because of his parents announcing their divorce to him on that day, and that's, I really wish they went more into that aspect, but I'm guessing that was, that's probably another aspect throughout, maybe later in that first season, I'm guessing, or sometime later in the show, but they're, I'm not familiar with the show, of course, um, probably major fan, uh, fans of Friends will probably let me know in the comments, but it is a, an interesting scenario that, um, right in, he's, I believe, was he the one that said there was this, uh, nude couple that actually were taken out, see, they actually saw a nude couple outside, I know that's weird to say that, but that's what is mentioned in the episode, and of course, it's obviously his dine-in, grilled cheese because with Rachel being an idiot for leaving the door lock causing the turkey and everything else from the potatoes the two different kinds of potatoes and the pumpkin I don't know about the pumpkin pie but just the main course and the sides completely burnt and the only option left was his grilled cheese and he was the one that gave a fantastic speech that yeah basically everyone kind of sucks and pretty much the life sucks, and I did kind of laugh. I really liked his speech in this episode, and it is really fitting to watch that after the passing of Matthew Perry. It's just really sad of how he died. Overall, um, I'm not really a fan of this episode. Um, it kind of, it's just like, there are some dumb moments, including the post credit scene, like the credit scene with, um, Joey trying to rip off the posters, and it's just so many sexual words, like, not in explicit, but, like, a lot of, like, like, prostitution words to try to get, oh my gosh, I, I won't go much into detail, but I would say that eh, this is not really my favorite thing. I would take it over the Green Day song any day because of Chandler specifically, because that was... Like, all of his moments in the episode was fantastic. The rest of them, I'll just say, once again, Rachel is an idiot. Well, Rachel is not the only idiot from an NBC show that caused something to screw up on Thanksgiving. Next episode, our titular comedian character also screwed up, but with a Woody Woodpecker balloon. Ha 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 ha!